The differences between piston and rotary engines. The majority of cars you see on the street will have one thing in common. A traditional inline four-cylinder engine with anywhere between 1.4 and 2 litres in displacement. More performance-oriented or larger vehicles will likely feature engines with more cylinders in a variety of configurations, such as the inline 5, straight 6s, V6s, V8s, V10s, V12s and even W16s. And while all of these engines will perform differently, they all go about their business in the same way. The rotary engine, however, is the black sheep of the engine world, whose approach to suck, squeeze, bang and blow is wildly different. To explain these differences, as well as the pros and cons of traditional piston versus rotary engines, let this animated video be your ultimate guide. How a normal engine works. For a normal four-stroke engine to produce power, an engine needs to do four things. Suck air into the engine, compress that air with a fuel mixture, ignite the air and fuel mixture with a spark, and finally expel the burnt air-fuel mixture out into the exhaust. The engine under the bonnet or hood of 99.9% .9 of our cars will execute this process using pistons and cylinders like this. As you can see, the piston descends, drawing air into the cylinder via open intake valves. At the same time, fuel is injected into the cylinder. As the piston travels back up the cylinder, the air and fuel mixture is compressed, which increases its temperature, after which a spark ignites the air and fuel mixture to force the piston back down the cylinder. As the piston rises again in the final exhaust stroke, the burnt air and fuel mixture is pushed out of the cylinder via an open exhaust valve and into the exhaust system. Diesel engines work in much the same way, except for one thing. Instead of a spark igniting the air and fuel mixture, a diesel engine compresses and therefore heats the air fuel mixture more greatly, meaning that it ignites without the need for a spark. The only exception here is on startup, where a glow plug is needed. It's this process of suck, squeeze, bang and blow in traditional petrol and diesel engines that make your car move via the crankshaft that carries the piston power from the engine to the wheels. How a rotary engine works. A rotary engine works on the same four-stage basis. The air and fuel mixture enters the chamber, is then compressed, after which a spark ignites the mixture. Finally, the spent mixture is forced out and into the exhaust system. Again, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. The way in which a rotary goes about this process is very different, however, because there are no cylinders or piston. Instead, a big rotor does all the hard work, and it's this rotor that people often refer to as a Dorito because of its shape. If we keep things simple by looking at a single rotor engine, there are five main components. A front plate, the rotor housing, the rotor itself, and a rear plate. The fifth component is the eccentric shaft that connects to the rotor, acting like the crankshaft in a traditional engine. The rotor housing that the rotor sits in features an intake port, two spark plugs, and an exhaust port. As the rotor spins, it creates a vacuum over the intake port, which sucks air and fuel into the chamber. As the rotor continues round, it covers the intake port, after which the air and fuel is then compressed. At the equivalent of top dead center in a piston engine, two spark plugs fire, forcing the rotor round further until it reaches the exhaust port to expel the burnt air and fuel mixture. And there you have it. So what are the pros and cons of each engine type? Let's start with the engine we're all familiar with. The traditional piston cylinder engine. It's tried and tested, reliable, and can be used for a variety of applications, most commonly in inline or V formations. Piston engines are also easy to maintain, don't burn much oil, and can be made to be economical, with minimal emissions thanks to smaller displacements and a very efficient combustion cycle. One downside of these engines is that there are a lot of moving parts, however, including the pistons, intake and exhaust valves, and camshafts, which results in lots of reciprocating mass. This in turn means that these engines are rev-limited due to the danger of valve float, where the valve springs can no longer keep up with the movement of the camshafts. Piston engines can also be very large, especially in inline configurations like the BMW Straight 6. These engines don't lend themselves to front-wheel drive cars or cars with small engine bays. That's where the neater packaging of a V6 opens up six cylinder usage to most cars, even in the likes of the MX-5. As for the rotary engine, one of the biggest benefits here is that it's extremely compact, meaning that you could swap it into almost any engine bay with space to spare. A rotary also has very few moving parts, and in the case of a single rotor unit, you're looking at only two things that actually rotate, the rotor itself and the eccentric shaft. This means that a rotary engine should be very reliable, but we'll get onto that in a second. The fact that there is no reciprocal 
reciprocating mass in a rotary engine also means that it's smoother than a conventional piston engine and has the ability to rev higher. And as we already know, rotary engines sound pretty cool too. So what are the downsides? Well, this list is pretty long, so make yourselves comfortable. Firstly, rotary engines are well known for burning a lot of oil, and that's because oil is injected directly via throttle control into the rotor housing to keep the seals lubricated and chambers separated. If you're not on top of oil maintenance, and if you use the wrong grade of oil, it's not uncommon to run a rotary engine dry. Secondly, and although a rotary engine should by nature be very reliable, you'll probably have heard the phrase blown apex seals followed by a man crying in the corner, which is a very bad thing because they seal the edges of the rotor against the rotor housing. And because they're prone to pitting or cracking, that means that a rotary engine will lose compression. Poor compression will result in misfiring, a reduction in power, a bad idle, and an engine that's hard to start when cold. You have been warned. Because the combustion chamber is so large, a portion of the air and fuel mixture will also not get burnt, meaning poor fuel economy and high emissions compared with traditional piston engines. The trade-off is that a rotary will therefore have a tendency to spit flames. So although rotary engines may sound like a good idea, they're flawed in their design thanks to seals that tend to fail and because they burn a lot of oil, which results in terrible emissions. So there you have it, the differences between piston and rotary engines and their pros and cons. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this, plus some awesome competitions that we've got coming up in the run up to Christmas. Right. Did I say it right? <laughs> yes, you did. Awesome, man. <laughs> Willie has got the most badass BMW that I think I've probably ever seen, and I bow down to it because <laughs> it is just so awesome.